and I now know why he did it on that hole instead of the first hole. It was because there's a lighthouse there and there's security with the snipers that wow. can look down. I'm Simon Brodkin and this is how I pranked Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. So I was trying to work out how we're going to do this, how we're going to get to him. And when we first got the news he was coming to the UK, that was amazing. And then it was looking back meticulously through all his golf course. He's obsessed with golf. He walks to the first tee, gives a crap speech. Scotland is important. Then tees off. But that was an amazing moment when he was coming to us. And that to put it in perspective in terms of how hard this stunt was to do compared to others, uh, to get around Donald Trump's security, they had to get around the FBI, the Secret Service, um, the CIA, his own personal bodyguards, right? To get around Theresa May's security, this is UK versus US. At the Tory party conference, when I gave her the P45, I had to buy a ticket. If you're thinking which head of state you wanna bump off, UK, US, probably go, go UK. Although to be fair, it's probably easier to bump Biden off compared to Boris at the moment. Just look, yeah, boom, and they'll be gone. So when you're looking for, when you're looking at the locations to prank someone, how long does that recce take? So because this was top, top level, I knew we had to leave no stone unturned. So literally going up to Scotland and checking out, I and mean, you don't want to go up to Scotland unless you have to. So this is a marker of just how much detail there needed to be for the stunt. So we went up there um, and it was a few hours there trying to work out where he's going to be, what he would do meticulously. I overthink everything, everything in my life, which is not that great when you're thinking of what you want for lunch. But when it comes to stunting head of states, it's literally the perfect set of skills. How can I gain access to the whole event? All right, number of ideas. Hotel employee, pretend I'm a golfer, pretend I'm a piper, dress up as a caddy and maybe join him. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And so I thought the one which has the best options is going to be to pretend I work on the course. Because if you work on the course, you get access to all areas. And in fact, that's one of the things we spotted and picked up on the recce. So I remember we picked up on the uniforms that they all had. And we're like, OK. And then, of course, straight on to eBay to be finding similar looking jumpers and uh, asking your nan if they can do a little cheeky bit of Trump turn breathe embroidery. I think there was one idea where I was going to come along as Jesus and just go, even I think this man's a It would have just offended everyone around the world. It would have been perfect, except for that sweet spot of people who were... Uh, uh, actually, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been good. That would have been good fun. Um, we couldn't get the, uh, the loincloth in time. No, I, I, that would have been a good one. But I, the, oh, I remember why, because a lot of these, you have to be undercover for quite a while before you reveal yourself. And dressing up as someone who works on the resort buys you a bit more time than someone who's bleeding from their hands and feet. As he's about to tee off, I chuck a load of balls at him. All of them have got a swastika on. So why did you decide to go with the golf balls in the end? And how the hell did you find somewhere to print swastikas on a golf ball? That was actually one of the biggest challenges, getting a hold of a couple hundred swastika and blades and golf balls. I remember making a lot of phone calls. Like, um, so what do you want them for? Um, I can't explain now, because you're constantly paranoid that people are going to find out and uh, or, or just arrest you before you've, before you've done the stunt. Dude, arrest me after I've done the stunt, not just getting the golf balls. I mean, I think it is a good thing that it's hard to get all the swastika and blaze and golf balls. I think it'll be a worse world if you just wander into your local sports direct. 100 of these, sir. 100 <laughs> of these Nazi golf balls. Yes. Um, I've still got a few of them. In fact, they were the Troublemaker tour that I just did. I, I got one out and talked about the stunt in the Troublemaker tour. And weirdly, sometimes it would get a cheer. I, I know why they were cheering. It wasn't weird. What was weird, if it's someone, I always imagined someone wandering in or who a little bit late for the show, not knowing much about my comedy. And just seeing this moment where I pull out a swastika blade and everyone goes, yes! Like, I'm gonna, 
leave this, I think. Should we go, honey? So, and also I used to be pretty paranoid because of, so I used to have a couple of them in the car, taking them on tour with me. And there was one time I stopped at a set, because I always had it in my back pocket. Because then I knew, like, you take it out, it's there, you want the show to be as slick as possible. And there was this moment in the Troublemaker tour, which I pulled it out. So I always had it in my back pocket. And um, I was coming home from one of the shows and I hadn't taken out my back pocket and I stopped at a service station, sat down, pulled my kegs down, out rolls a long... Guys, that's my... It's my swastika ball there, guys. It, it, it was very lucky that it was uh, at whatever time in the morning and there weren't many people in the service station at the time. The ones who were, were, were Nazis anyway. So they, they were happy to give it back to me. I chose the balls because I thought that he was going to be opening the golf course and then taking a shot off the first tee. That is what all my research made me think. That's what the recce to the golf course made me think. So I was like, it's a lovely image with his hotel behind. He's going to want the cameras there. And he always teed off. So I assumed he was going to tee off. And that was the thing I got wrong. He didn't tee off and it wasn't on the first hole. But my vision was for him to, as he's about to take the shot, <laughs> 100 swastika and blazing golf balls around him. You know, um, he didn't actually take a shot at all. I think by that stage, you know, the CIA and was like, you, 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 you can't do that, dude. And you want to be looking a lot more presidential. And if he smashes it, I don't know, knocked out a journalist or something, I don't know. He decided to not do that. So that was what I got wrong. And so that's why it wasn't in the perfect stunt because it didn't quite match what I thought was going to happen. I'm not exactly sure what the vibe's going to be out there, but I'm prepared. There are barriers. There's police cars doing circuits every few minutes. And then one of the other funny things was about transporting it, because the last thing we want is, is to be spotted on the train with hundreds of swastika and blazing golf balls. So that's for that reason, decided to get the car and not risk it, because you just cannot have anything going wrong. And I think it was that time they were doing random security checks. I think it was at the time there had been something awful going on and people were having bags checked at different places uh, on public transport. But it was a strange moment for a Jew, such as myself, to be happy to see so many swastikas in one place. It's like, yes! They not only searched you and patted you down and wandered you, they opened up your bag, they made you take every single thing out your pocket, they took apart any electronic devices, they opened up your sandwiches. This is top level security. So yeah. it's a day of the event. How are you feeling? Yeah, absolutely shitting it. And, and, and it couldn't have been any more intimidating. I've subsequently found that I think the Secret Service's secret is they're a little bit shit because we, we got past them. Once you get past this whole thing with the glasses, ah, dude, it's just like getting past the bouncer in weather spoons. <laughs> How did you manage to get you and the bulls past security? The bull, getting the bulls was the most complicated thing of the whole stunt because even the level of security that I thought it was going to be, they outdid that. They were taking everything apart, anything electrical. They were opening up bags, opening up. I mean, they left my own cavities alone, I'm pleased to say. Um, uh, but they were checking everything. And so the balls, we had to get them in days before in the hotel, hidden in the hotel. Then I got through and because the hotel was part of the golf course and because I was also checked in under a false name there, I was like two identities. I was working on the golf course in my prank mode and then collecting the golf balls from my hotel room in, you know, holiday maker mode. And that was the hairiest thing of the lot and pulled that off. And that's why a lot of the other stunts we couldn't do because, uh, you know, you try getting a, a nine foot cross snuck into a hotel room and then across into the actual golf course. Sorry, Donald. Those are the new balls you ordered. Um, <laughs> just got a few here for you, sir. These are the new balls available from the, uh, from the clubhouse as part of the new Trump Turnberry range. Get him out. Get him out. Um, Get him in.
That's on, that was on my poster. Get him out. <laughs> Get him out, Donald Trump. For this tour, uh, for this show rather in Edinburgh, I've got uh, stupid tosser Boris Johnson. It's good to have famous people slagging you off for your, for your tour posters. Thank you, mate. That was the main objective. So why did you throw the balls on the course straight away? Was it nervous energy or like, did you just have to do it there and then? Great one. So once he started approaching, first of all, we'd gone for the wrong hole. So a lot of the positional stuff had changed and I just had to adapt to that. And, um, and secondly, as soon as I saw him coming up, I'm like, oh, shit. He's not teeing off. I was a little bit gutted. Um, and also, so I was like, do I abandon? Do I carry on? Let's carry on, because this is still going to work. And I was there thinking, there's no advantage to me holding off. Like, let's say he's one minute in the speech or five minutes into the speech, and Trump speeches are normally three hours. Let's do it when everyone's attention is there. And also all the security at that point are probably like, and relax, we've got him here. Everyone there, we've security checked. So it's probably a little window into thinking when people are a bit more calm. Um, so that's why I just did it straight away. I think the edit there suggests it was slightly sooner than I did. I think he was a little bit into his speech, but I was thinking, why wait? Let's go, 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 baby. So what is going through your head when the security guards come running at you? Well, I'm one of the few people who, when securities are coming at me, I'm happy. I'm like, yes, job done. You're under arrest. I know, mate. Mwah! Because, you know, security aren't interested in you usually unless, unless I've done the prank. So it was a bit of a melee. They weren't sure what to make of me because Secret Service, CIA, Scottish police officers aren't trained in the art of taking down a prankster. And so they're confused because most of the people they used to are aggressive or angry or wanting to kill someone. It's like, what's this guy doing? There is confusion. I was told that guns were drawn. I mean, if you can understand and pull out the level of security, because you've got, and I now know why he did it on that hole instead of the first hole. It was because there's a lighthouse there and there's security with the snipers that wow. can look down. There is a lot of confusion. I'm the only one who knows what's going on. The person who's having the stunt done is confused. All the security are confused. But at that stage, just want to be like, don't do anything that's going to get a bullet in your head, which generally is a good rule to live by anyway. It was actually the Scottish police who arrested me. The clip goes on and you see me getting carted off. I like my commitment to the character. I was like, sorry, sorry, Donald. Oh, sorry, Mr. Trump, I meant to give him out earlier. I'm really trying to keep it non-offensive. The only person who has is getting arrested is apologising. Sorry, Donald, I forgot to give these out earlier. So I'm dragged off. Scottish police were incredible. They persuaded the CIA not to press charges which was just one of the greatest things because all it takes is one person to say they were scared because all his kids were there as well and all the crowd were there. Invited guests, if one person says they thought it was a bomb that I'd thrown, they can easily do you. Scottish police found it funny. They were incredible. They were, I mean, what, what I actually, there was a, the, a big moment when I get dragged off, I'm taken to this uh, police van sat there crapping myself for over an hour, handcuffs on, this armed officer yanks open the van door. And I'm like, oh my God, this is serious. He just goes, use me, I'll very <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, and he, he loosened my handcuffs, gets me to sign one of the golf balls and gave me a sip of his iron brew. And that's when you know a Scott loves you. It was amazing. They gave me a lift to Glasgow airport and I got a flight back to London. God bless the Scottish police. Incredible, owe them forever. Free tickets for life to anyone in the Scottish constabulary. I love you boys. Do the proper two alpha control. Uh, gentleman has now been arrested. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And this is an amazing honor. It's an amazing day, very historic day for a lot of reasons, not only Turnbridge.
Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Stone Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone Viral.